park in driveways and drive on sidewalks? Welcome to Comedy Bang Bang. Hmm, good question. Thank you to Carl with a K, although he spells Carl with a C. I don't know what that means. All right, well, uh, anyway, thanks to Carl with a K for that catchphrase submission, also with a K. Coming up a little later, we have a singer. We also have a financial advisor. Well, you know, I got to say, in these tough times... Uh, especially with uh, uh, everything running out at the end of the month. uh, I think we need financial advisors more than ever. So that'll be some great advice that we'll be getting a little later. We also have a a comedian and an actor. Uh, This is episode, let's see, I, I believe it's about 66 episodes past the 600 mark. Coming up first here, by the way, my name is Scott Ackerman. I am very first. Coming up second, I should say. Uh, She is... uh, A lot of people know her as the owner and proprietor of the W Hotel here in Los Angeles, Uh, not the chain of hotels. And uh, we've been checking in with her kind of regularly during these COVID times. Uh, But please welcome back to the show, Bean Dip. Hello, Bean Dip. Hey, hello. Welcome, Scott. Now, you seem to not realize that the W is like Subway and his franchise. I, I bought the one in Hollywood, BFD. WBFD stands for what? W, big fucking deal. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, why didn't you just call it WBFD? That I think well, that would make it more popular. Because I'm not just trying to get like, if you if I'm walking down the street, I was like, oh, WBFD, W, big fucking deal. Then I think to myself, I'll go there. I'll have somebody who likes to party. I Hey, I like to tear things up. I like to wreck things. I'm trying to get classy clientele, not just people who like BFD. Right. Do you like to party? I've never asked you this question. I feel like hey, that's man, an oversight. Does a dog like to run up a hill and then catch his breath and walk back down it? Yes, <laughs> dog. I love to party, dog. <laughs> what What is your favorite uh, partying experience and how exactly do you love to party? I, my favorite thing is to find somebody with a very deep part in their hair, like where I could see the line in their hair. I like to fill that with cocaine. And they gobble it out of their hair part. Okay, so I'm trying to think of anyone with that deep of a part. Uh, there, Crispin Glover, I would imagine. Yeah, Crispin uh, Glover. Remember, there was a dude from Kid of Play for a moment that had a very deep part. Um, hmm. It's just like he, he was I, only any, in Kid and Play for a minute, or he only well, had a deep part for a minute. Because <laughs> as far as I remember, Kid and Play was not like Menudo, where you age out of it and they get a new play. Well, for all I know, he's doing shows right now on the road, but I have no idea if his part is still deep. Are you talking about Christopher Kidd? Uh, I can't remember his name, but he, he he wrote the theme song to Real Time with Bill Maher. I'm actually talking about James Play. James Play. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh-huh. Is that his actual last name, James Play? Uh-huh. But he spelled it P-L-E-Y. Oh, okay. So one uh-huh. letter off. Uh, just one letter different. Don't hey, don't judge a book by its cover. You think he might be up for a good time, but you then you realize the A is a E. Now, are those days behind you, Bean Dip? Are you still partying? I mean, you're the owner and proprietor of this gigantic, major uh, uh, hotel right here in the heart of Hollywood. Major. So usually now, when I just when I am going to have some partying go on, it's usually more like. Hmm, drink drink a bunch of scotch off of somebody's skin. Okay, so they're a little bit different than the cocaine. I mean, you're just yeah, a little scotch. more like child's play. Oh, child's play. That's another uh, movie from back in the '90s. Speaking of kid and play in their house party, two thumbs up. Child's play. Don't don't wake up with Chucky. <laughs> that, what a nightmare! That is like a bachelorette's just. You know, date from hell, waking up and suddenly there's Chucky. Yeah, man. Can you imagine anything worse? (laughs) I don't think I I literally don't think anyone could ever imagine anything worse. How exactly are you drinking scotch off someone's skin? Belly shots, temple shots, butthole shots, elbow shots, nose shots. How does one do a butthole shot? Because I would think it would fall out. I mean, gravity is the enemy of the butthole or sometimes it's friend. (laughs) Scott, get real. Gravity is always the front of the butthole if you tell the shop person to lay down on the couch, be very still, make sure your butthole does not move. Those are a lot of instructions just to give pleasure to you. That's you know? why, because I'm trying to get my shots and not have them to 
I, I'm not trying to eat a shot off of a couch. I need to get it straight from a butthole. <laughs> okay. So tell me what's going on with the W now. The last time we checked in with you uh, a little over a month ago, I think, uh, you had about nine people who were staying at the hotel, including Leonardo DiCaprio and uh-huh. Charlize Theron. And, uh-huh. But you were telling me off air that uh, things have changed there. Yeah, things have changed there. Now we we have about 35 people living there. And wow. Okay. So f- your fortunes have improved. Yeah. Everybody there has COVID, but. Oh. <laughs> but there's like 35 of us living there. We all have a great time. Um, everybody goes around in hazmat suits so that no one will catch it from each other. Everyone. But, but everyone it. has it. Right. Everyone has it, but we're trying not to get it again. Oh, I see. Okay, you don't want to double up the dose. Uh huh. Is is Leo still there or Charlize? Are they oh, still there? Oh, Leo's still there. Charlize is still there. Can I just say capital A and then O Y I N G? Cap. Uh, I'm trying to follow this. Capital A O Y I N G. Capital A and then O Y I N G. Annoying. <laughs> oh, annoying. <laughs> Capital A double N O Y N G. Okay, thank you. Um, they're annoying to you, really. They are annoying to me because it's constantly like, oh, I feel like doing something. Oh, I feel like having a swim. I feel like having room service. But they want me to do all of it with them. So I'm just like, stop being weird. Because you like to sort of uh, give people the whip uh, as well as the carrot. Is that right? Well, people who are staying there for now during the pandemic, don't cause any mess at the W. Please stop bringing everybody's spirits down, Charlize. What, what is Charlize Theron doing that's causing a mess? I mean, she she seems oh. like a very tidy person. By the way, Charlize Theron is in The Old Guard, currently streaming on Netflix. Believe me, she talks about it constantly. I've watched it five times with her because she makes (laughs) me watch it with her. Yes, she is a tidy person behind closed doors. Once she gets into a communal space like a lobby or a kitchen, she literally, literally starts pissing. (laughs) What? Really? The second she crosses the threshold of a communal space, she starts projectile pissing. This is disgusting, and I'm going to have to ask if you have any sort of hidden camera video of this that I could uh, be sent uh, yes. off air. Yeah, you do. Okay, great. We are, okay, compil- just- we are compiling a montage. It's about three and a half hours long. Of oh, right. Charlene so it's kissing. like a Girls Gone Wild videotape? Uh, yeah, but Char- it will be called Charlize Theron Goes Wild from Pissing and Communal Spices. <laughs> oh, okay, well, I think that's going to be very popular. That's uh, one of your side hustles, I think, that uh, will uh-huh. be actually... Uh, we, we'll sell it at the at the hot dog truck where I sell uh, carrots inside of hot dog buns. Now I I thought that it it was cucumbers. That, <laughs> well, that's to carrots? Too. carrots is a new development. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know that we have time to talk about this shattering new development of we carrots. We probably don't, but just just know this: some people are like a like a more sturdy, hard hot dog. A carrot will never give up. Wonderful words in this time of uncertainty. Uh, we could all be a little more like carrots, could we not? I don't think I'm not getting some shirts printed of this right now. Do it. It's like in a, in a Comic Sans font. It says, hmm. during these times of pandemic, we could all stand to be more like a carrot. I don't know that I have that kind of time to put into a T-shirt. You know, I. Well, all you have to do is put it on, Scott. No, I'm just saying, like, if I'm going to read a T-shirt, I think four words, five words. You know, okay. mustache rides five cents. That's the perfect T-shirt. That is a pretty great T-shirt. So, are you are you still having uh, topless Tuesdays out there at the W or topless Tuesdays, Wednesdays, now also Thursdays? Oh, okay, so you've taken over the entire middle of the week. Ah, uh, just the middle, because people still need to have a, a weekend that they feel like it's different from the week. So, uh, do you have another? I mean, the T-shirt business obviously is is something that's uh, expanding for you. But do you have any other kind of things that you're doing, or hobbies, or ways to occupy your time during the the quarantine here? We started a thing, but you know how if you have a plant that sometimes it will just it will start to go bad. Sure, a, pl- a plant. Yeah, in fact, I have one right here behind me. I'm not sure if that's why you <laughs> that's why you thought of it. Well, we take pl- only plants that are going bad, and then we put them in places like parks. 
Oh, okay. What what does that do for them? Does that make them grow better or does it make the park look shittier? Well, because people are getting depressed in their houses. They they are like looking at the plants. They're like, oh man, what am I supposed to do? I'm just like this plant. I'm wilting. I'm dying. We're all going to die. This uh, quarantine is going to kill us. You want it out of your sight. So call my business. We'll come get your plant that's going bad. We'll take it to the park. Which park are you using, by the way? All child parks in the city where the, any place where they got it, something you can climb on, slide on, play on. That's where we're going to put the dead plants. Sorry, kids. Sometimes you got to do things in honor of adults. Um, well, Bean Dip, it's it's always great to see you. Are you I, I want you to act as my co-host during this episode, if that's OK. Uh, I, I, I need your constant input, if that's all right. I would love to give you constant input, but hey, I'm not I can't go easy. Yeah, I know. I mean, you. Uh, I really want you to hold our guests' feet to the fire, if that's okay. I mean, if there's any sort of, if you think that they're wriggling out of a question, and look, it, you know, the thing, the problem is, is I'm the host of the show, and I also book it, and I need people to want to come back, and so I take it easy on people, and it's access journalism at its worst. It but is. I need you there by my side, just really, you know, piercing through and asking the tough questions. Easy. So t- what's tough for me is easy for you. Simple for me is a snap cinch. Mm-hmm. Okay, very good. All right. Well, we do need to get to our first guest, our guest of honor, if that's okay. Uh, he is the aforementioned stand up comedian slash actor. And uh, uh, we don't know which he considers himself to be more, but he is a, uh, a regular on the television program Black Monday, whose season finale. Uh, we got him right here over the wire uh, was last night on Sunday, but uh, all episodes are still streaming on uh, the Showtime app uh, as well as other places. He's a, a very funny guy. Please welcome. First time on the show. Please welcome Yasser Lester. Hello. Thanks for having me. Um, you are. Uh, look, the burning question that's been on everyone's mind. Are you a stand up comedian? Are you an actor? Are you both? What is going on? OK, first, I am an opioid dealer. <laughs> okay. That is my passion. <laughs> That is where my heart is. Uh, number two, I would say stand-up comedian. That's where I, you know, that's where I started. Uh, mm. Writer, then actor, and then opioid dealer. I started as a baby, but I wouldn't call myself a baby currently. Right, but I, the thing that I do technically the most is sell opioids. Okay, I guess I'm not technically then, a baby. Yeah, yeah. But you, here's the thing. It. If you go in a long enough timeline, you're technically always a baby, right? Compared to a tortoise that lives to be like 176, like you're a baby. You're just a bigger baby. That's a good point. And some people never get to be anything other than a baby. Yeah, I want to talk about that. <laughs> I want to good, talk about. I want to talk about subject all these, for this. I want to talk about all these babies who bounced early, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. It's great to have you. You are uh, a, a great stand-up comedian and uh, uh, a very funny Twitter follow. Uh, you've been on fire during these uh, during the tumultuous events of the past few months. <laughs> mm-hmm. I took the pandemic and a war against the cops and racial equality, racial inequality. And I turned. Oh, you call it racial equality? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting yeah. point of view. Well, here's the thing. I, yeah, I'm on the opposite end of it. <laughs> like, I'm just like, oh, things feel fine. That's <laughs> that's been my whole platform. Is things feel fine? It's it's just me and Terry Crews. <laughs> um, let's talk about Black Monday because it's it truly is uh, one of my favorite television shows. Uh, it's so funny and. Um, Flying a little bit under the radar, the the season that's currently out was interrupted by uh, the 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 quarantine, and uh, uh, you play yeah. a wonderful character uh-huh. uh, who's so different from yourself. Describe uh-huh. this character and tell us his name. Uh, well, the character's name is Yasser. Uh, he oh. looks like me. He sounds like me. He's as tall as me. Uh, <laughs> I always thought that he was like three inches shorter. That's interesting. No, no, that's it's because I'm sitting a lot. Oh, in the show, okay. Everyone else stand, is on an Apple box as well. Yeah. Here's one of the keys. When you're not good at acting, <laughs> if you just make sure the character is exactly you, and then people never know the real you. They think you're good at playing someone else. Interesting. It's really just me. 
with different glasses, Scotty boy. What would you say is hard about <laughs> acting, though? Because uh, oh, I'd say do you not memorize that. the lines or? Uh, uh, what? I mean, there's the lines thing. There's like the other people being better than you think. So you're intimidated <laughs> all the time. I think the, the the hardest part about acting is believability. Is, is that is that what you uh, say? Like, well, I would say I would say equal parts believability and eating disorder. Those are oh, the two okay, things yeah. that like, you got to make sure. Oh, buddy, you know, you just got to eat apples for six months at a time. That's it. <laughs> Don't eat anything else. You eat a few apples. You try to convince Don Cheadle not to fire you. You move on. <laughs> so describe Yasser's uh, uh, role on the show. You are. Well, first of all, let's just talk about the show itself. Black Monday. What does it mean? Let's break it down. Black. Okay. okay. We uh, all know what that means. Monday. Day of the week. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 Um, but what, what what is this show? I mean, it's a it's a period piece. It's set in the 1980s, I believe. Yes. Uh, so Black Monday was the largest single day crash in financial in American financial history. Not a lot of people know that. You know, we think of, you know, the Great Depression times and all that stuff. But this is this is actually the biggest until actually recently under King Trump, who we love. We can't say enough good things about him. Mm -hmm. uh, I know people call him like Commander in Cheeto. I call him Emperor Beautiful. There's not enough things. I, I just love how sexy he is. I call him, and this is this is kind of mean. Yeah. And I don't mean to, but I call him the Orange in Chief. Oh, no. That's See, uh -uh. not cool, I'm sorry. Right? Like, here's the thing. I, we're going to keep the interview going. But honestly, if you talk about him like that again, I don't know. Okay, what I'm, I'm sorry. Say. I to you personally. Scott, if you're going to. Oh, you my God. Me, Bean dip. I forgot you were here. <laughs> but sorry. I just wanted to hear you also talk about his show. But I got to jump in. You, if you, you have to be nice about it. You have to call it like the beautiful grapefruit who's the boss. Okay, grapefruit boss. Thank boss you. Boss grapefruit. Well, it's just like, I understand it, Scott. He's trying to tell you. Why were we talking about him? I don't remember. Yeah. Um, so there's a large financial crash then. Uh, so the show is about, it started as like, you know, the first season was building up to this one day crash, you know, it was following the year leading up to that crash. And now the second season has kind of been like what the characters lives have been like since, since this crash, because one character played by Don Cheadle was trying to essentially short the market. So he'd make a bunch of money. A bunch of people found out about it. Regina Hall, uh, Andrew Rannells, who are the other characters on the show, and figured out how to swindle him out of the money that he was trying to swindle them out of. And now it's uh, this second season has been about like, you know, the strained relationships and how, how do they come back from that? And then on the show, I play a janitor who every once in a while pops in and goes, y'all need anything? Y'all y'all need me to take out the, uh, take out the No, no one needs trash? me to take is out the trash? What? Hey, Why are hey, you paying me? If there, anyone needs a, an office vacuum, let me know. And then, uh, and that's pretty Interesting. much it. Now, now th that is, of course, you are exaggerating. <laughs> you you play a very funny character. <laughs> I I play a financial trader. A young, I play like the youngest person in the office. So like a young financial trader named Yasser who like, uh, is clearly like on the cusp of like, you know, like what the nineties are going to be like in a little, a little more cosmopolitan and thought, you know, and a little more contemporary and thought I should say, uh, but also very much an idiot who, you know, does cocaine, but is also a Muslim. Uh it's not great. <laughs> you know, when people talk about canceling things in the future, it feels like this might be one of those things that I end up apologizing <laughs> for. for. Right, now, right now, funny stuff. Right now, mama's having fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so because you're playing a Muslim, are you a Muslim? In real life? No. So here's what happened. Uh, David Casp and Jordan Cahan wrote the wrote the pilot, Friends of Yours. They originally wrote the character as an Indian guy. And uh, they're like, hey, you should, this would be a fun little thing. It was just supposed to be like a one-off thing. They're like, you should, you should just do this role. And I was like, cool, but we will get in trouble. Like I, my mom is black and though I haven't met him, my dad is Palestinian. <laughs> I was like, so we can do that. Like I can dress like Yasser Arafat, but I absolutely, me showing up in a turban is bad <laughs> news. <laughs> Um, so we, we filmed it with me as an Indian anyway. And then when the network came back and said, no go, I changed it. 
<laughs> oh, I got to see that footage. Hey, you can't stop me. You know, who would who would tell Van Gogh not to cut off his ear, man? You wouldn't. You'd let him cut off his ear and keep paying. Well, it's it's a really funny show. You you work a lot with uh, Horatio, our old friend Horatio. Uh, you have a lot of scenes with yes. him. And uh, it's, it's like you guys are buddies in the office together. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like in a show full of idiots we are the stupid <laughs> you really are too. you know like the I mean? schemes like, that the so two of you like, get up to are, are yeah. just insanely dumb but i also luckily every other you know part of the show requires some formal training in terms of like saying any kind of word dramatically <laughs> right. i can't do that you know um i know horatio can but like he, he, you know he loves being a right. goofball so i think that's kind of where they're like, oh, yeah, it might be fun if those two just are not around. <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, that feels good. And me and Horatio are kind of like, yeah, cool. Yeah, don't put us on the posters either. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, I, I was wondering what it was going to be like because, you know, uh, Showtime comedies are usually these kind of dramedies. I never saw House of Pies. Yeah. But um, usually they're kind of these sort of half comedy, half dramas. And so I was sort of expecting that with Black Monday, but it's just a straight up like silly. I mean, there are some dramatic stuff in it, but the majority of it is just like, you know, the minute that Don Cheadle karate kicked a door open in the pilot, I was like, okay, I'm loving this tone. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's a you know, I, I know we go a little darker than Ray Donovan. Of course, it's know. hard not to. No, we handle it. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, Bean Dip, I know you've seen it. And you, you text me from time to time and be like, wow, this is this is, go- this is going a little harder than Homeland. But we also still like to have fun, you know? I respect it because when I do text, when I do text you about it and I say, I'm not sure about tonight. I'm not sure about how far you guys went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're very polite when you write back and you right. say, look. We had to do what we had to do. I didn't know that you guys knew each yeah. other. <laughs> yes. And Bean Dip, you, you promised you were going to go hard at the questioning, and you've just been, like, pitching softballs. Okay, ready? I'm ready for you to do this. Yes, go. This is a question that me and Yasa want to know. How come you all be such a dick to him? <laughs> Not softballs at me, at him. Oh. You're you're my co-host. Oh. You're, you're supposed to be... The one interrogating Yasser. Okay. Well, how did, well, Yasser, how did you get so handsome? How did you get so talented? How did Scott to get to be such a dick? I don't, I don't know if I'm comfortable answering that, to be honest. That's a little. Which part? The me being a dick part or the, uh, you being handsome? No, that, I mean, that, I feel like that's the softball. How am I supposed to answer (laughs) the other two things? I don't know. Well, uh, it's a great show and, uh, I really want people to check it out. People can watch all of the episodes right now on the Showtime app or they're all being repeated on Showtime, I would imagine, but it's really funny. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think, uh, uh, like I said, flying a little under the radar, which is, you know, the Harrison Ford special. But uh, it's not good when you're a plane, certainly, uh, uh, unless you're trying to evade capture. Right. But uh, for a television show, yeah. you uh, you also want to be a little uh, over the radar. You want to be in the radar. Are you yeah, know what are I mean? you kidding me? You want missiles pointed, man. <laughs> sure. You, wanna, you know, you want people to be like, take it down. All right. Well, we need to take a break. Uh, uh, Bean Dip, anything you want to say before we go to break? I just want to tell um, Scott, you to please be best. Okay, thank you very much. Good advice. Uh, When we come back, we're going to have a financial advisor. We'll be right back with more Comedy Bang Bang after this. (laughs) Comedy Bang Bang, we're back here. Uh, My co-host Bean Dip is here, and uh, she is transmitting from the W Hotel. Uh, You're up there on the roof, it looks like. That's why I woke up on the roof today. I have a, I have a tarp wrapped around me so that you can't hear the wind. It is very windy. Out. We also have Yasser Lester here from Black Monday. Uh, all twenty episodes available to be binged. I mean, what else are you doing during this? You know, t- we're all just sitting around. Why not watch Black Monday? Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That that's been the big thing everyone's saying is what else are you doing? Try well, that's this the thing. show. <laughs> Everyone says like, oh, there's too much TV. There's too much TV. And and also people are saying like, when are new movies coming out? Well, you can't have right. it both ways. Watch all the old stuff that you haven't gotten around to. 
True. But I, that being said, I did buy out a theater full of chill children. We're all going to see Christopher Nolan's tenant together. Whoa. No masks, no masks, sharing one soda, no straw. It's mouth. So, <laughs> it's just, lips on the cup. Just <laughs> <laughs> and we're passing it from person to person, much like Jesus and the fish. I don't know <laughs> how it's going to multiply, but I'm pretty sure we'll be OK. Well, we do need to get to our next guest. Uh, he is the aforementioned financial advisor. Oh, he's a returning guest. He's been on the show several times. Uh, please welcome back to the show. Douglas Gropes. Hi, Scott. Hi. Hi. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. For having me. I know it's not an easy time for anyone. Think about where we are. Think about what we're doing. Right? Think about all this. What a magical time. Also, it's it's not easy. It's not easy having you back on the show because you've given such poor financial advice in the past. And that's how it feels. It feels like I have not succeeded in the past. It feels like I've fallen down on my face so many times in a row. But that is the key to somebody who finally will succeed. Financially will succeed. Financially finally will succeed. You keep trying. You get up and you walk forward. Don't run. Go slow. Look to fall again. Very good. So uh, uh, what have you been doing since everything's happened? I mean, you know, I was living in my car and I'm not bragging about that. I'm just trying to make it sound like a cool thing. But from there, I went uh, during this whole the covid crisis. I found an opportunity where I could I could go into places that are no longer open. And I basically could have a um, have you ever heard of the term frogging? I, I, I know the video game Frogger. It's like that, except it's kind of, it's different. It's where you go into people's houses during the day when they're working uh, and you uh, basically live in their house while they're gone. And then you find a little secret spot, a little secret spot to hide at night when they come home and they don't <laughs> even know you're there. Maybe you play with them a little bit by eating a few extra blueberries out of the refrigerator. So they go, where? Hey, where are my blueberries? And you living up in the attic, you actually know uh, where the blueberries, you ate them. You chuckle silently to yourself. Oh, I'm the one who ate them. Well, but that's where I've been staying. I've been frogging, um, at some people's houses, um, at a, uh, an AMC movie theater. I've been frogging oh. and the entire UCLA campus I have had to myself. It, it's, 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 it's honestly beautiful. And, uh, it's probably the, the richest lifestyle I've ever led. And, it's all because of the opportunity of what's happening in society today. What's the number one thing in the world that people need? And uh, it, it's not mm. besides besides things like love and water and a, food? a bathroom, shelter? food, a, sh a shelter, uh, a place to play after school. You no, know, it's mm. the number one uh, thing that people need. Yes. And this is something that I came up with and I thought about as I was frogging and I had a lot of time by myself to think of what's my next opportunity going to be. And I figured it out. Gorgeous, it? Ca gorgeous cars. G gorgeous cars are very important, but not more important than this bean dip delivery service. Delivery service. And in oh. today's day and age, delivery service is honestly the number one needed product in the American and worldwide uh, economic system. Did you get, think about it? Did you know that? I guess I didn't. I, no, I, you didn't I, know it. You didn't know that. And I didn't know it until I did a certain amount of research. So the company uh, offshoot of my other companies is called You Get It? You Get It. You Get It? You, you you have to say it with a question mark kind of going up at the end. You get it? You have to you say it. it. Otherwise, people are just making an assumption. You, you get, get it. it. You get, get it. it. So you I'm get being it. polite. I'm being polite. That's right, Bean Dip. You get, you you get, get it. it. You get you it. Get I'm, st I'm starting it? too high. I'm starting. I got to start lower. You can you do it. get it. You well, I was start no, I was starting too high. I couldn't get quite up to the top of the notes start at the end. Start lower then. Start I'm going to start lower. You get it. That's great. Right. That's Is great. That okay? I love hearing my plan come to life. Hearing you guys say that, it makes me so happy. Here's how it works. And it's so simple. It's so simple. Say you, you have something you need delivered. Say it's a, a box of a, a bunch of soft, uh, cakes. A bunch of soft <laughs> cakes that you need okay. delivered. And I don't know. You could have them delivered anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. You need your soft cakes. Delivered somewhere yeah. in the sure. world. Soft cakes. Okay. You come to me and I go, I'm going to deliver those soft cakes for, and you give me just a simple flat fee plus other charges. 
And what, <laughs> what, what I do from there is I go ahead and deliver that to where you need it delivered. It's a $35 flat fee, no matter where you want it delivered, plus some other charges. Mr. Groves. Yes. yes. If I want a bunch of soft cakes delivered to the W in Hollywood, yes. Wh- how do I get in touch with you? Do you have a storefront? Bean dip. That's such a great question. Yeah. It sounds th- like we have to come to you. Is that that? The- <laughs> you would come to me wherever I'm frogging at the moment. Currently, it's at uh, Theater 16 at the Universal City Walk. Uh, theaters. Oh, okay. Um, That's one of the big ones. Yeah, that is a balcony. You can say that again. It is one of the big ones. It has stadium seating and I've slept in every single chair. Now, listen, step two. Now you owe me three deliveries for whatever I need delivered from somebody else. You become somebody who now will deliver three things for me wherever they need to go in the world. So I pay you $35. Plus some other charges. <laughs> and then I also owe you. I need to deliver three things for you. No, you get to deliver. You oh. then you're able to deliver three things from me. One of which may be the original soft uh, cakes that you want to uh, deliver. Okay. Maybe it doesn't have to be, but it could be, which is do, amazing to think of like, what could be. Do we get so, paid the $35 for each delivery? The for the additional three, no, those will be funneled through me, where I will collect the thirty five dollars plus okay. some other charges. Once you deliver okay. the three other items, then you are free. Until then, you're s- sort of like my friend slash employee, Mr. But, Groves. Yeah, this, bean dip. Hi, hi. This is sounding great. Um, could you break down for us a little bit of the extra charges? That's a great question, and I'm glad you asked it. So step four, step four, after you are free from uh, your There's delivery. a step after that. Okay. I, I thought that would be the last step once you're free. Well, you do commit to one year of any time you send something that you have to return to me. It's sort of like a uh, contract and it's only like a contract uh, so it's like because a, you sign off on it. It's like the Rumpelstiltskin clause or something like for a full year, we have to come back to you to. That's exactly what it's called. The Rumpelstiltskin clause. And uh, and I'm glad you brought that up. It's almost like is this, this where like out. you k- you kill Rumpelstiltskin and you become him, <laughs> like the Santa Claus? <laughs> God, I wish that could happen, and maybe it can, because anything can happen in today's world. Now I know what you're saying. What if I don't want to deliver these things? What if I don't want to go say to uh, do a I don't know anything like a soft uh, a box of soft cakes, and I don't want to take that to. <laughs> Why do we Orlando? keep talking about yeah, yeah. soft have cakes? You, have you delivered anything? And I'm I'm just asking sincerely. Have you delivered anything besides a soft cake yet? That's a great question, and I'm glad you brought it up. And questions are the lifeblood of my business, right? Uh, right. I I want you to know uh, I have delivered a couple packages, but only so far one, and it was a box of soft soft. Beautifully, so soft cakes, almost cakes. undercooked cakes. Um, and I did so deliver batter. Them. You delivered like, batter. Yeah, batter? Yes. Yeah. Mushy yeah. batter? Just, batter was, just liquid batter in a cardboard yeah. box. Yeah. yeah. And it didn't, that part, it, we have to look past that because that was a, every business is going to go through its growing pains. And that didn't work out. That delivery didn't actually uh, occur because the batter did soak the cardboard so much. That it actually, and you're not going to believe this, it's soaked through and leaked all over the street. Uh, we believe it. Uh, we, yeah, there's we, we, no yeah. part of me that doesn't believe it. I know, it's unbelievable. So what I'm saying is now we can move forward, right? We're starting to recognize this, the mistakes that I've had early on in the business, and now I'm ready to do a full launch, a full launch. What What is step four? We have to come back to you within step a year? Step four is that you've signed off on a one-year contract with me. And now when you do sign that contract, you have a choice. You can either have it one year or lifelong. Now for lifelong, <laughs> it's, a, it's the same price. Okay. Well, you know, they say with businesses like the the people that are investing – yeah, they their their biggest what they come to the table with is the problem. So you can prove that that you that have you're the a, solution a solved. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. I think pro- so, I, you say problems. I say uh, wet wipes because they right. clean you. Up. OK, but that's for, that's for the batter. My my question is, is, <laughs> you know, like the post office, yeah. 
you can mail something. Wonderful place. I've never said anything bad about yeah, it ever. I, I love the USPS. But the thing about the post office is if you like give them a package, you pay and then you don't owe them a favor. So yeah, you, it pretty to, much ends the transaction right there. Right, exactly. Right. And if that's yeah. what you're into, look, I'm not going to sit here and try to convince you that my business is better than the post office. Oh, you or should that be. Mine is better yeah, than that. I'm going to sit here and tell you that oh, okay. having, oh, uh, owing favors to friends, not just just business partners is something that keeps you healthy and it keeps you gritty. And I also want to say, what's one of the biggest problems that is happening in this whole COVID crisis is that people aren't able to get their unemployment because they have jobs and they're making money. With my system, <laughs> with my system, you wouldn't be able to have a job because you'd be too busy traveling. You'd be too busy traveling and so, delivering wait, I'm sorry. Soft, it- soft cake batter. Uh, which, yeah. by the way, we're now delivering in bags inside the ca- the cardboard box tied up. Okay. okay but, so wait, I just want to make sure. So your the business also doesn't count as a job. You said that. And why would it? Business- That's one of the. Le- I did a study. Uh, okay. These are favors, study. yeah, sir. These are favors. Okay, these are favors wanna, between sure. friends. I'm sorry. I did a study and I interviewed all these people, th- three people, and I asked them. Two of them didn't answer me, and one of them. One of them said, my least favorite thing is a, a job. Least favorite. So according to my study, people's least favorite thing is a job. So why would you w- not want to take them away from that job? Was and this a now- study where you were walking around saying working hard or hardly working to people? <laughs> this That did coincide with that study. If that's what you're asking, the, the number one thing you want to do in business is multi-study. So you just don't do one study at a time. These were people that were sitting in the movie theater the last day that it was opened. And I Mr. asked. Mr. Groves, them, Mr. Groves. Hi, be- hey, Bean Dip. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering, you said something about that it will keep you gritty. Listen, do I mean keep you gritty, keep you tough? Yeah, but I also mean keep you dirty. Keep you dirty because I put you on a timeline where you're not going to have time to clean yourself or take showers. You're going to have to have these uh, packages delivered overnight sometimes, every time, overnight, no matter where it is in the world. Will it be on your dime? Yeah, getting back to those extra charges. You're going to have to travel yourself. You have to pay for that travel yourself. And I do not want you traveling coach. Pay for the upgrade. What's the thing you get out of this? You just become a better person? Well, it, you become a you become a better person. You get the excitement. Have you ever done a favor for a friend? And it feels good, right? Yeah. Uh, I see where you're coming friends. from. And this is where the name of the company comes in. You get it? You, you get it. That, uh, you because get you it? will get, you get they it? will get one email. You the get people it? who are supposed to get the the package get one email the next day. No, nothing in the the text of the email. Just in the subject line, it says you get it question mark and says Do yeah. not, don't respond. Don't respond to this email. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, <laughs> tell me right now: Are you in or are you in real hard? Hmm. Okay, I'm ready to answer this question. I think I'm in, but I need answers to a couple of things. One, are you, where are you right now? I am in seat 6A of the AMC Theater 16 at the City Walk in Los Angeles, California, Universal City. I am not supposed to be here. You might hear an excitement to the tone of my voice, but there's also a whisper because we do have a security guard who comes up and down and I have to time it out. So every once in a while, I'm going to have to get quiet. Okay. That's, that's cool. Wait, can I ask a question, Mr. Groves? I'm so sorry. You got because it. I, I, I just, you know, I, as someone who is excited about this, I, I want to clarify. And I love that. that. I, love I just, I, I, I'm pretty much on board. I just, is one more thing because when you introduce the idea, you said it was to, to get something delivered. It was thirty five dollars and then extra fees. And then as you went on later, I know you said that as you as you being the person who has to do the delivery. Yeah, you actually incur the extra fees. You got it. So, See, that's okay, what okay. That, so those are the extra this fees. Working. This is working. You guys are understanding the thirty five dollars plus extra fees goes to me. The charges that you you get to spend, you're allowed to spend, come out of your own pocket. And why? Because those are expenditures that are going to fulfill you and make you feel great about life. Get you excited. 
So, I, so, but, so we're paying extra charges twice because if we're getting something delivered, we're paying extra charges. And then also. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And here's okay. the best part. Here's the best part. No tips allowed. So if you deliver something, oh. I, I have a strict no tip policy. The most they can do is offer you a little bit of the product that got delivered. So if you do want some of the very soft, almost wet, it's like a wet cake. If you do want some of that, they may offer it. You can't ask for it, but you, you, can't can, you might it. walk away. Why is that? Cake. How come that's all you deliver? Well, so far, I'm just coming up with examples. It's, it's the one thing that you've delivered at this point. So you could get anything delivered. Say, besides, you want something. Yeah, other can than you wet think cake. of one other thing that you yeah, could you get could delivered? Yeah, you could have a big box of wet cookies. Just a, bo- a box of wet, fluffy, um, like, uh, not soggy, but wet. Cookies. Any non batter related things that you can put The majority being of things delivered are going to be batter related. And <laughs> do, why? Well, that's just something we're best at and we have experience doing. But guys, here's what I'm saying. It's easy to get down right now. It's mm. real easy to get down and, and with everything that's happening. How great would it be to get outside, grab stuff that somebody else ha- has owned and wants you to go deliver it to somebody else, take a, take a nice, relaxing, probably pretty long flight, but possibly terribly short flight. Right. So just, this is and, all pre-owned stuff? Well, they that's part of our system. <laughs> this is a good question. Oh. <laughs> you can't, because it's coming from people's houses, it has to have been owned by them even for a brief period okay, of time. Okay, so you're not allowed to ship anything that you don't own? No, <laughs> and they will transfer ownership to me. One, so if I do, say I chose to keep it. Say they had like a box of, Wait, I'm um, sorry, you can keep it? You can keep the thing that they gave you? Well, of course. It would be silly if they if you couldn't keep it. That wouldn't make sense, would it? Say someone loans you something, like, a, I don't know, just as, as an example, some soft, soft cakes. Well, if I want to ship something myself, if it's my box of wet, soggy, wet, wet cakes. <laughs> Why did you then, have this box to begin with? <laughs> well, I honestly, they weren't supposed to be wet and or soggy. Um, and there were supposed I, to be fully cooked cakes at this point. It was somebody, it was from a p- previous business that I had called, uh, wedding, uh, wedding. You have one wedding, W E T T T's no wedding. <laughs> well, that's where things got, that's where things got confused. Uh, because the baker that I had make the cake, he assumed I, because I spelt it W E T T. <laughs> he assumed you wanted it just to be bad. He did. He and I don't know. I don't know what happened, but I still tried to send them and it didn't work out. But but could it get better? Can it get better? Will it get better? <laughs> you should answer. You should say yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. then yes. Then yes. <laughs> then yes. If you guys are backing me up, then yes. If you're not backing me up, then I you know, I've got a lot of things to think about and I've got a I didn't want to bring it up, but I know I have to be out of the AMC. Uh, by by the time Wednesday. Tenet opens. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah, because yeah, Tenet's coming being, out, baby. And I got I got a uh, theater full of kids that are excited to see it. Well, Mr. Gropes, are you crying? You're also swallowing a lot, which is just like a, I, cho- because it feels like a tears cool choice. Because are a way of hide When you have so little hydration that I've had, because the soda machine stopped working about, honestly, about... Six weeks ago, the soda machine oh stopped God. working. Oh, my God. No. Yeah. So I've been recycling all the liquid in my body since then. So it, wait, but you haven't been drinking water? Like well, so, uh, it, No, no. All the faucets and uh, the plumbing is down. So oh. it's not a um, – it's been pretty hard. I have been drinking urine. I filter it. Um, through I, what? Through, through a seat. You, it, you, through a <laughs> through seat. Through a seat? Through a movie theater seat? Yes, through a movie. <laughs> so hang mo- on. So you sit on the movie theater seat, and you let your dang your dangle daggle drip piss out of it through a seat. Then you put a cup underneath to catch your own piss through a movie theater seat. I wish I had a cup. I have to time it out so that I pee through the seat, and then I quickly go down and <laughs> sh- oil, like I'm changing the oil in a car. I shove myself <laughs> underneath the seat, and I just wait. And I wait. And by the way, I lose a couple drops each time. So I'm down to a very short, small urine 
process right now. You, let me tell trouble. you something. You need to talk to Charlie Theron. <laughs> yeah. That must have, if you heard that previous segment, your mouth must have been watering. It, to be honest, yeah. I'm very so if you ask me, if you look at me and you see me crying and I'm drinking my tears, hell yeah, I'm drinking my tears. And that's okay. part of the reason I have to get out of here because I have to go find a water source. I, I don't know. Are you guys in? I this doesn't seem like a tell me you're in. I, I'll say this. I don't know a lot about like money and investing, but I have thirty five dollars and then you're me, in. that feels like I'm in as well. Oh he dips in. And I think I think you should come live at the W here in Hollywood at the invitation extension. That's the nicest thing anybody ever has ever said to me. And yes, I will take you up on that. In fact, I I will I I'm on my way now. Great. Well, we have water, you dummy. I I'm in too. I Scott's guess in. Just Scott's in because of peer pressure. Business, guys. I mean, we got a business, so I'm going to give you guys this right off the bat. Um, I'm going to give you a trial run. I have sent a um, just uh, something random to your your places, and by that I mean you guys can come pick them up at the W when I get there. But these are boxes of um, these are boxes of soft. Uh, wet cakes. Oh, shocker. Yeah how, yeah, how could we have known? <laughs> different flavors. Different okay, flavors. that's twist. Late third act twist. To what state? What state? It's uh, wet. It's very... No, no, no. State, state in the United States. <laughs> what state in the United States, Mr. Globe? Oh, I'm sorry. That's not... This is going to Palestine. And you guys are going to... This is your trial run for $35 plus charges that we can discuss later. Don't get mixed up in the numbers. Okay, well, uh, I, I guess we're all locked into this. Uh, locked you, in. guys, you guys free next week to go to Palestine together? You guys uh, gotta yes. go today. <laughs> oh, is it today? Uh, well, <laughs> oh, all right. Well, okay. uh, you know, we still have one segment left on the show. Is that right okay to finish that. it out right after that? Okay, right tell you what. Right after that. We do need to take a break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to have a singer on the show. That's very exciting. We'll be right back with more Comedy Bang Bang after this. <laughs> <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang, we are back. We have Yasser Lester, who is from Black Monday, all episodes, and I'm talking 20 of them, are available to be streamed right now. Uh, we also have Bean Dip here from the W Hotel, who has uh, graciously offered a room to our other guest, Douglas Gropes. And Douglas, it looks like you've arrived at the W already. I mean, that, that was a quick trip down the 101 freeway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I flew. Um, and oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, from Burbank, from the Burbank airport helicopter from AMC oh. helicopter. And uh, you guys just as like a favor, we'll split that cost. Hmm. Okay. Well, also, I need, I need Mr. Gross to be clear. The only reason he came in a helicopter here is because he is injured. Th that is true. Yeah. How are you injured? What exactly happened? Well, because of my dehydration, I have lost the tips of each of uh, the ends of all my extremities, just the tips. So, just, so ten toes, ten fingers, and a penis. Oh, Scott. Yeah, I said the tips. Yes, just and the I, tip. Just the tips. So yours? Can I just ask? Yours just ends like an infinity pool. Like an infinity pool. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Can you see the just, sunset off that thing? <laughs> yeah. Oh. You have no idea. Well, uh, speaking of no idea, I have no idea who our next guest is. Uh, this is uh, the uh, 66th episode after the 600th episode, which makes that, I guess, episode 666. Uh, and we have a singer, I'm being told, uh, coming on to the show. And uh, let me introduce him here. Let me get his information here. And oh, wait a minute. This uh, I know who this is. This. Uh... This is a singer we've had on the show before. Please welcome back to the show, Leo Carpazzi. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. What a thrill to return to the program on your 666th episode. What a milestone. Yeah, I, not really. I mean, it's not like 650 or it's not like breaking off another hundo or anything like that. But uh, what are you doing here, Leo? Uh, you, don't I usually see you in October? Yes. Well, because it's the 666th episode which is the number of the beast, famously associated with the macabre. It's and a because, human number. <laughs> a human number. But I am a, but, I mean, it, you know, it's associated with devilry, with Lucifer, with Satan, whatever name you want to call him. And I am, I too am associated with 
the dark arts. I, as you know, have composed one of the greatest, perhaps the greatest Halloween novelty song of all time, The Monster Mash, back in 1962, popularized by Bobby Boris Pickett that same year. <laughs> Now, the exact same year. Was that a coincidence that he popularized it that exact same year? Well, I, I guess it was kind of the studio. The label had paired me, the songwriter, with Bobby Boris Pickett, the front man, and said, you take this ball and run with it. And I did the job I was hired to do, mm. and he he went and became a, a So that was star. the normal process, was someone would write a song, and then the person would popularize it within 12 calendar months. <laughs> Yes, in the same way that Lennon and McCartney popularized many of their own songs sure. uh, immediately, <laughs> it's the same process. Well, not immediately. They would usually have to record it. They wouldn't, you know, That's as true. they were playing it, it wouldn't become popular. No, there is a little bit of lead time <laughs> associated with the recording industry. But I, I wrote the song, The Monster Mash, in 1962. And as I've explained on the show before, it the one that became popular was not my original vision for the song. That's right. We've heard your original plans for the Monster Mash. Yes. What exactly were those plans? Well, the monster imagery that I created for the original version was just too vivid, too disturbing, and the label would not allow it to see the light of the day. Too descriptive. Too descriptive. So I came up with the sanitized version. That's the one that everyone knows and loves, sings every Halloween. And, and the, one that, the one I've that we all know and it. love, how does that go? That goes something like Dracula's Bob and Apples, or I can't really remember the words. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a there's a lot that goes on. That Honestly, I've, I've kind of lost familiarity with it. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't think I've ever heard it as much as your version, which I've heard far too many times. Yeah, well, I, I'm here for your 666th episode. With some big news, which is that when I've come on the show before, I always say that I have a new sh new song, a new composition, and I end up playing the same song that I always do, the ori my original version of the Monster Mash. Well, things have changed. Oh. I wrote a new song for your 666 episode, and let me tell you, I'm aware of my raunchy reputation, and I leaned into it. I'm not I'm not running away from it this you're, time. I'm leaning into it. You're leaning into Okay, so you've always been sort of like, you know, uh modern day Andrew Dice Clay who's trying yes. to distance himself from his hickory dickory doc days. Right. Uh, well, like I you know, I predate I I predate the Dice man. I mean, I was on the scene <laughs> in the 60s. I mean, he cometh back in the late 80s. That's true. And That's you true. you are having your monsters cometh, you know, back in the 60s. We both had our blue periods that we distance ourselves from. Uh, sure. But I have I have decided, you know what? That's what I'm known for. That's my gimmick. I've composed a new song for your 666 episode, and it is a little lewd. It it's, is called. So it's blue. It's blue. OK. And it is called, but also red, like the f flames of hell. OK. Because like it is that, so macabre. that denizen of the underworld, Satan himself. That's correct. With his pointy tail, horns, his pitchfork, pitchfork poke you in the butt with it. <laughs> sure. It's no good. The song that I have composed is called, again, I'm leaning to the ranch, 6 6 Sex. 6 <laughs> 6 Sex. Now, is this, are the two sixes spelled out so it, it, the title looks symmetrical? Or is it the number six, the number six, and then sex? I didn't think of how to put it to paper, but I think your first pitch is better. I think we'd write <laughs> out six. Uh, like how, the word, what about six, a combo? Six, six, like a, a, so it's uh, at least... It's kind of like a teeter-totter with two words at the end. It's like a six and then a, a number six and then sex at the end. So it's like, wow, this could go anywhere. That to me, I'm picturing that and that, se that seems like the name of a SoundCloud rapper, <laughs> which is really not my aesthetic, but I, I like it. I still, I, a six, 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 let's do it. The first one's the word, the second one's a number, and the third one's the word. Okay, so this is a, t here's the issue to me, Leo. Yes, Every time you've come on the show, and you've done it at this point seven times at least. That's correct. Usually on the Halloween shows. You lure me in by saying you've written a new song. You tell me the title, and it sounds like it's going to be a new song. And then you just sing the same song over and over with no variation. <laughs> I just want to make sure that that's not happening anymore, because that's why I stopped asking you on the show in the first place. Right. Uh Scott, 
I assure you, this is a completely new song that I wrote from scratch. Look, can you swear on a loved one's life? I know that you it wasn't your daughter, Scaroline. Didn't she die? You said the last time you were on the show. Yes, my granddaughter, Scaroline, unfortunately passed away, uh, but she did participate in this new song. She laid down her vocals from heaven. Oh. So she does have a presence on this this all new track. OK, will you uh, will you at least say that should you be lying that that your granddaughter, Scaroline, will be cast out of heaven and be submerged in the pits of hell at, at the very least? I, in a, I will say that in a heartbeat because you're telling the truth. Yes. May my granddaughter be cast out of heaven and into hell if this is not a wholly original song. All right. Well, that's what that's those are the assurances I need. So, OK, OK. I, I, I'm willing to hear this. Okay, so this is a brand new song. This is exciting. This is Leo Carpazzi, who has, who has not written a song since 1962, the same year that uh, his previous song was popularized. This is a brand new song called Six Six Sex by Leo Carpazzi. Let's hear it. I was working in the lab. Late one night, when my eyes beheld an eerie sight, for my monster from his slab began to rise, and suddenly, to my surprise, his trousers dropped right to the floor. With his bottom bare, he ran to the door. I said, Frankenstein, what's gotten into you? He said, my dick is hard and I need to screw. He did the fuck. He did the monster fuck. The monster fuck. It was a graveyard fuck. He did the fuck. That monster sucked and fucked. He did the fuck. He did the monster fuck part 666. Six, six. six, From my laboratory, six, I heard quite the racket. Six, six, Deep in the castle, the vampires jacked it. Part the zombies all fucked in the graveyard grass. Six, six, wolf man wolf down Frankenstein's ass. They did the fuck. They did the monster fuck. The monster fuck. It was a graveyard fuck. They did the fuck. Those monsters sucked and they fucked. They did the fuck. They did the monster oh. fuck. Part the beasts six, all fucked as the orgy spread. Six, six, Bigfoot gave the headless horseman head. Six, Swamp Thing jerked off in the Swamp castle thing. moat. Six, while Frankenstein six, gagged from the jizz in his throat. Part the fucking was wet, there was spooge like mad. Six, Igor decided to fuck his own dad. The mummy let out a horny moan when Medusa's bare tits turned his dick to stone. They did the fuck. <laughs> they did the monster fuck. The monster fuck. It was a graveyard fuck. They did the fuck. Those monsters sucked and they fucked. They did the fuck. They did the monster fuck. Part and Frankenstein's six, bride was horny as hell. Six, the hunchback six, went bareback and rang her bell. She six, got titty fucked by a giant spider. Six, Jizz six, made the streaks in her hair much whiter. She six, fucked every monster come one come all. Six, her three holes were filled like a bowling ball. Part and while part skeletons six, boned his undead bride, six, Frankenstein just jacked off and cried. Fuck. It's now the monster fuck. The monster fuck. And it's a graveyard fuck. The monster fuck. Those monsters suck and they fuck. Now you should fuck. Now you can monster fuck part 666. Six, depraved. <laughs> They're all depraved. Okay. And that's the new song. Ah. Uh, I. That was the exact same thing, Leo, and you have to admit it. You have to admit that the, that the only deviation from all the other times you've done it is occasionally, not even every time, you've said mm. 666. Yeah, the first and the final chorus. Uh, right. It's, uh, look, it's a new song. It's a new compass. I started this from scratch, and I, I can. I have my things that work for me. I have my hook, and I, I just, you know, like I said, I leaned into the raunch. I leaned into what I know. Even you have to admit that this is the exact same thing. Why would you do this to me? It's look, it's the, it's a similar song. It's got a similar structure. Ninety nine point nine percent of it is similar. I will say this: look at Rush's discography. 
A lot of their Why? albums are treading the same ground. <laughs> sure. But they're not singing about Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn every goddamn song. I mean, maybe that was their mistake. <laughs> it might have been. Because that song was gangbusters. Look, I'm sorry, Leo, but I'm afraid that your granddaughter is going to be cast into hell now. And, and you know that that's true, right? You knew that coming in. Well, to be honest with you, Scaroline was looking to get out of heaven. Really? Why? It's kind of a lame scene. You know, all your do-gooders are up there. People who saw that PSA about not downloading a car and they're like, oh, I won't I won't pirate a movie ever. It's <laughs> yeah, all those you, kind of folks. Well, you got Jimmy on guitar and, and John Bonham on drums and, and David Bowie on Vox. It's not like that. Really? No, you got Jimmy Carter on guitar. <laughs> He's not even dead yet. Jimmy as of press time, dead. as of press time. So he's he's making trips up there. He'll pop in up in his spare there, time. Yeah. <laughs> he's not very good. <laughs> well, look, Leo, uh, you've done it to me again, and I don't appreciate it. Um, I don't want you to ever return. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, I'm okay if this is my final appearance. <laughs> Happy 666 episode. Oh, okay, Leo. It's Thank a man, you. What, a, what a milestone in podcasting. Congratulations. <laughs> it's just 666 is. more. Well, guys, we're running out of time. We just have time for one final feature on the show, and that is a little something called plugs. It's that time of show. Beautiful. That was Harmonious Plugs theme by Lost and Found, our old friend Lost and Found, who I believe uh, has a SoundCloud himself, speaking of SoundCloud. All right, guys, what are we plugging? Yes, sir. Uh, obviously, Black Monday. People can watch that. Yeah. Uh, Black Monday on Showtime streaming. Uh, Duncanville on Hulu. Are you on that? Uh, I, yeah, I, I play a character named Yang Z. I'm a little cartoon, a little cartoon version of me. Uh, again, uh, there is no acting involved. I am not good at that. So it is my voice over a cartoon who looks almost exactly like me. Again, there's no talent involved. Where can people see any of your uh, stand up? Are you, do you have any specials out there or? Um, I have one on, uh, uh, well, I don't have any specials. There's one on comedycentral.com. There's like a set. And then uh, the rest of them were locked away in the Epstein raid. He had a few <laughs> copies of the DVDs that I was selling. <laughs> and those are gone now, but uh, and uh, but those were my good sets. Those are the, yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah, those are the those are the best ones. And you're always a great Twitter follow, so people can uh, check out what you're doing out, out there. Uh, all right, uh, Bean Dip, wh what do you want to plug? Well, I'd just like to invite everybody to come to the W for lunch inside the W. We will not be having outdoor seating. You could come inside the W. And also, I'd just like to tell mm, people, watch some, watch some stuff that my friends do. On. What, you can stream a show called The Righteous Gemstones on HBO Go, HBO Max, whatever you like. And there's a cartoon coming up called The Fungies on Cartoon Network. Is that the That's, Fugees, you mean? or No, 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 no. One time. Fungies, Scott, fungies, like people who are mushrooms. Oh, okay. And uh, there's a podcast coming out on Audible called uh, Letters from Camp. That's uh, that's a fictional nine-part podcast that people may enjoy. Okay, very good. Uh, Douglas Gropes, what are you plugging? The website is not officially up, but it should be within the next couple of months. www. Uh, you get it good like you should with gropes. edu slash backslash you you get it backslash cake batter. Uh, also, uh, so this is a, this is a cake batter website. You're you're selling cake batter. It, I'm not going to commit to that, but if you got ideas, I'm willing to sit down around a table and listen. Mm. Uh, and check out some, um, check out season three of The Last OG on TBS. Hopefully they come back, but who knows? This world's crazy. It is crazy. Uh, Leo, I'm going to give you an opportunity to plug something. Go ahead. Yes, please listen to the Monster Mash on your streaming service of choice. I still get royalties from composing that song. And then also, my late granddaughter, Scaroline, wanted me to plug Corporate on Comedy Central, a show she worked on. The third and final season premieres Wednesday, July 22nd at 10.30 p.m. So check out Corporate on Comedy Central. 
All right. So that's uh, that is on currently that was, it premiered last Wednesday, I believe. So uh, very good. And uh, I'll plug. Uh, I, I think you probably just have a few more uh, days to check out uh, Comedy Bang Bang on Netflix. I think they're taking it off again for whatever reason. Maybe it'll be back on the day after like last time. Who knows? I have no idea what's going on. They don't tell me. All right. Let's close up the old plug bag. You start with a C when you want to close it up. You leave with an L and then you open up the plug bag open up the plug bag take your hand and open it up then Horatio comes and then he just says been open up my life to hit the days of paradise I've been it all my life I've been in it I've All right, guys, want to thank you so much. Uh, Yasser, uh, g- great to see you and, uh, you know, continued success with Black Monday. Hopefully it, it uh, comes back for a season three and all those unanswered questions get resolved. Or they don't. And people just forget. Sure. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what can happen? Uh, you know, that's the way TV works. Big yeah, Daddy. of course. Uh, Leo Carpazzi, uh, please don't return. Got even though, even though you're song brewing, though. <laughs> what? Oh, you do? What is it? Mm, you'll see. <laughs> OK. Uh, Bean Dip. Ha. Huh. Great to see you. Great to see you, Scott. I'll see you tonight. Oh, please don't come by. And uh, Douglas Gropes. Hey, great to great to be here. Have fun in Palestine. Well, yeah, we're all leaving st- right now. You can stay there as long as you want. Just be prepared for your next package uh, delivery, which you'll have to come back to me and get. We're going to make this work. Remember, if you're not failing, if you're not falling on your face. Oh, you really should end that. <laughs> That's You need the second half of that equation, I think. <laughs> You can't I'm just stop there. It. I'm working, You're working on, on it. Okay, by the when you come back next time, have it. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>